understanding cost accounting, flexible budgeting, sales volume variance. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. You'll also see a very good website for one of the universities where you can access each professor's portal and uh, get a lot of good information on business school classes. That's where we got some of this, income, this uh, information. We're going to review from the prior period flexible budget variance. This is based on actual sales. It's defined as the difference in operating income between actual results and what your flexible budget results indicated. So here's our example. You'll see that the bottom line, the one at the bottom, is operating income in blue. Flexible budget said we'd get $3,680,000 in operating income. Our actual was higher, which was great, $4,030,000. So we have a favorable flexible budget variance. Remember, favorable, when we have income or sales, favorable is higher, is considered good or favorable. If this was cost, which we talk about above it in the variable cost line, higher costs are obviously unfavorable. That's why we listed here in red at $150,000. That goes back to our prior course where we explain the difference between favorable and unfavorable when we talk about variances. What caused the variance? If we were to break it out, we had a sales price variance that was favorable of $500,000. We had a variable cost variance that was unfavorable by $150,000. So going back to the chart, here's our favorable $500,000 sales were higher than we budgeted for. And our unfavorable cost costs, variable costs, were $150,000 higher than we budgeted for. And that's how we got the net of those two numbers, which is a $350,000 favorable flexible budget variance. So continuing on here, we reintroduce the term static budget, a budget based on a planned level of output at the start of the budget period. I want you to think about somebody who's being stubborn here. The static budget says we're going to stick to our estimate of what output, what sales will be, regardless of the actual. Now we can use that static budget to make a comparison with the flexible budget. And we call that comparison, if you look at the second heading at the bottom of the slide, sales volume variance. It's the flexible budget versus the static or unchanging budget. And the only difference between the two is the level of production. Moving over here to our chart again. And going to the next spreadsheet tab. We work our way up to the top. We've titled it, titled it budget versus budgeted flexible budget versus static budget. Now look at the difference here in the first line by genes produced. We have a static budget we decided that genes produced were going to be 120,000 a year. Come what may, we're not going to change that number, but our flexible budget indicated an output of 100,000 pairs of genes. So our difference was 20,000 favorable. We produce more genes than we thought we would. Now when you work your way down the chart, we have a sales price of $50 a unit. We have variable costs of $12 a pair or unit. And we have fixed costs of $10,000 monthly or $120,000 total for the year. Those per unit prices, values for sales and variable costs, and that total fixed cost number won't change between the two. The only thing that's different is the number you multiply it by for sales and variable costs. We're multiplying those budget, flexible budget detail numbers, those per unit, per pair of gene rates, by different amounts of genes. That's the only difference. So as it turned out, because we sold more genes, produced more genes and sold them, we had a favorable sales variance. We sold more stuff. Because we produced more genes, it shouldn't be surprising that our variable costs are higher, since the rate per pair is the same for both. Produce more, more cost. 
But the bottom line when we look at contribution margin, which we defined in the last presentation of sales minus variable cost, shouldn't surprise you that contribution margin is favorable. And contribution margin is simply the million dollar favorable sales variance less the unfavorable variable cost variance. And if you've done your math right, you'll see here at the bottom of the page where we talk about a sales volume variance check. If we take that difference in budgeted actual sales of 20000 and we multiply it by the contribution margin per unit that we budgeted, and if I click on that cell and I click on the formula, you'll see that it's the $3.8 million contribution margin divided by the number of genes we budgeted to produce 100000 we get that $38 number. Multiplying the $20,000 additional pairs of genes that were produced times that contribution margin, we get that same $760,000 favorable sales volume variance. Why is it favorable? Because we're more profitable, we have more operating income. So again, please be careful with the difference between favorable and unfavorable. Higher costs is unfavorable. That's what we have in the 240000 Higher sales or higher contribution margin in blue is favorable. So you have, to, you have to keep in mind, are we talking about sales, which helps us if it's higher, or costs, which hurt us if they're higher? That's the difference. So again, to repeat here, under sales volume variance, the level of production is the only thing that's different. That's the end of Part 9 of our cost accounting presentation. You'll find Part 10 on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. We have a complete list of videos on the home page at the bottom of our website, that web address, stltest.net. We have live tutoring and chat sessions on these topics all the time. Here's our phone number and our email address. We'll see you next time.